which are loved across generations and which manage to bring out the child in each of us. Be it fighting over your favorite five star or readily sharing gems. Mondelez, with its delightful assortment of chocolates over de generations or decades, has ensured that it has given us that kuch khas zindagi mein, even when the going gets rough. That's why I'm more than pleased to welcome Mr. Anil Vishwanathan, uh, Director Marketing Chocolates, uh, Mondelez India, to our pitch brand, uh, Talk Virtual Series. Thank, Thank you for joining us, Mr. Vishwanathan. Thank you. Glad to be here. Today, we shall be discussing how Mondelez is managing to stay close to its consumers, even in adverse situations. But before we start, I'd like to request our audience to keep sending us their questions. Uh, we shall try and take them towards the end of the discussion. And also, please keep tweeting. Uh, our hashtag is E4M webinar, uh, pitch brand talk. Well, let me start with my uh, favorite brand. Now, for years, we've associated Cadbury Dairy Milk with celebrations, the happy moments of our lives. Uh, but the current circumstance that we're all in has left very little scope for celebrations. So tell me, how did you go about keeping that age-old brand positioning intact? I think, Nita, if, you, if you've been seeing uh, what you've been doing with our brand, uh, Cadbury Dairy Milk, over the last couple of years, we've actually taken our proposition of Kuch Mita Ho Jai a few logical steps forward. Mm -hmm. I think after having spent uh, a fair amount of years trying to expand the consumption of chocolates uh, mm -hmm. by substituting or offering it as an alternative, a modern alternative to traditional Indian sweets. I think we've seen that the category has expanded and found relevance in millions of Indian households. I think the next logical um, uh, role for us uh, was to kind of play a larger role in consumers' lives. And I think over a period of time, we've tried to see what is the emotional connect uh, that mm -hmm. we can drive beyond just celebration and beyond just being an alternative to traditional Indian sweets. And I think that's where we've also kind of pivoted and gotten closer to our global brand proposition, which is around generosity, right? Mm -hmm. And I think one of the earlier things that we've, done, we've been doing over the last three years is to try and figure out the right articulation of generosity that is relevant for our culture. Mm -hmm. So the journey, if I were to put it in, in, in Hindi, has been from Mitha to Mithas and kind of expanding the um, uh, the role of chocolate, not just as a mere substitute in mitha occasions, but actually stand for mithas. And mm -hmm. as we started understanding the space of mithas and the sweetness and goodness, I think there's a natural relationship between goodness and sweetness. And that's the bit that we are trying to leverage in our messaging. And that's where we got to the new strategy of Cadbury Dynamite, really, which is about kuch acha ho jai, kuch mitha ho jai. So any time that uh, there is a moment of goodness that is worth celebrating, that's, that's worth sharing, that's worth shedding light on. Uh, I think that's what we've picked up as the proposition for Cadbury Dynamic. And this journey has begun a couple of years back. right? And it's all about spreading uh, generosity or goodness uh, that's inherent in us. And I think mm -hmm. when we explored the space with consumers, I think we also found out that this is the space that's most at risk. Okay. In a country where everybody is... Uh, busy in their own pursuits, very focused on their own needs and their own um, uh, uh, focus. I think that's what has been at stake. We are an inherently generous culture, but mm -hmm. we find people missing that, not showing that adequate amount of generosity. And that's what we've been talking about, shedding a light on that. And interesting, right? In, this, in these today's times, comes a crisis when we actually realize what's core to us and what our core values are. And I think the country is spread with a feeling of mm -hmm. generosity a feeling of gratitude for all those who are making our lives a bit more simpler, all those who are braving the situation out there and kind of, you know, battling mm -hmm. so that we are comfortable and safe in our homes. And definitely a feeling of gratitude amongst all of us uh, who possibly have the privilege to be comfortable in our houses, right? And I think hence uh, for the brand, uh, which is now talking about uh, the purpose of being generous and inspiring people to be generous, what better time? to join this movement and kind mm -hmm. of help people express their generosity. Because there's really no limit, right? You can't just say, I said thank you to a person and it's done. I think constantly on a daily basis, I think we feel that we need to express our gratitude. And that's really what the brand uh, has picked up. And, um, uh, and not only talking about it, but also kind of doing it uh, in, in many ways. You know, and another interesting thing for all of us who grew up in the 80s and the 90s is that you brought back the iconic uh, Kuch Khas Hair tune in one of your videos that came up recently. So, so tell us, what kind of response did you get from your viewers? 
very good response i think uh, uh, because what we are trying to say is also so core to the brand uh, uh, and i think one of the things that we realized early on when we were researching the impact of this situation with consumers i think uh, mm -hmm. we, we we found two broad kind of themes two broad drivers of the impact to where the consumers are feeling one is this whole feeling of the pandemic and what the pandemic has mm -hmm. created which is a sense of fear a sense of concern about our own health uh, and hygiene and uh, the health of our us and our families and also concern about the kind of things that we should be doing what brands we should be choosing a feeling of a desire for reassurance yeah and then of course this whole space around restricted living where people are not being able to live the way they were lots of constraints staying within their homes not being able to do the things that they used to going out etc and then relying on their kind of uh, uh, kind of close knit family and themselves uh, to kind of cope with the situation i think we saw that consumers were definitely looking for reassurance and positivity uh, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, a, a feeling that yes this time this this too shall pass and you know we will come across at the end of this kind of uh, uh, dark tunnel with light at the end of it and i think hence they were looking for positivity and i think uh, uh, what better uh, positivity can the brand bring, bring by you know creating a set of messages that are inspiring and bring in bring back a tone which we thought would evoke that feeling of specialness and positivity and nostalgia because that's what we uh you know link nostalgia with happy good feelings that make us feel reassured mm -hmm. so that's that's what kind of uh, triggered the thought and of course it is our agency team which is working you on know, it you mentioned, about, you, know, you mentioned about nostalgia so you know even that kuch khaas hai zindagi mein still has a very strong brand connect uh, even today did you consider at any point to bring back that entire commercial because i was watching uh, ramayan the other day and i think uh, one of brands amul it has brought back about the 20 30 year old greeny commercials you know which are very high in nostalgia value so did you think at any point that you can you know, bring back your old commercials because you have a legacy there of course i think uh, one is to rely on your legacy and one is to also create new legacies and that's the balance that uh, you know we always have to tread and i think uh, you know in all honesty mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's a, it's a very familiar uh, uh, storyline and a familiar ad and a familiar Uh, uh music jingle for a bunch of us who mm -hmm. possibly uh, are the gen y and the gen xers and possibly the gen zers need something which is much more modern and new and that's the balance that we've been trying to do with the brand so uh, for the younger generations who possibly don't remember that who were born born in the in the google and the star network era uh, you know they might not remember that and for them we have a bunch of different stuff that we are doing so you know it's it's a constant balance that we need to strike in some of these things and also another thing is you know logos are considered to be sacrosanct for brands but on 1st may for the first time in 70 years cadbury dairy milk replaced its logo with the word thank you so so tell us why did you decide to tweak that even if it was a limited edition bar i think uh, again uh, uh, over the last uh, couple of years as i was saying i think the moment uh, 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 you start thinking about purpose and what a you know what we want to do uh, with our brand beyond just offering our core uh, product offering which is a great tasting chocolate and really want to stand for something and inspire people uh, to do something i think uh, what we've realized is that it's not just about standing in a pedestal and telling people to do stuff it's also about doing some stuff yourself mm -hmm. and i think this is uh, in 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 its own way the brand is also trying to say that look hey i'm also out there uh, and you know uh, i'm not here just to uh, ask you to go and do something but i'm there with you and uh, i want to stand mm -hmm. for uh, the emotion that i that i talk about and i think it's about kind of uh, uh, and attempt to reach out and make a bit more of an effort uh, to reach out and connect and solidify that connect i think just just adding mm -hmm. that element of uh, um, authenticity and effort into the message i think is the, was at the core and i think uh, uh, we felt that uh, if you genuinely feel about it what what better what better stage than the real estate that mm -hmm. our packs provide to really pass on that message it's almost like then provides a very instant trigger right you go into a store and you see a thank you bar of chocolate 
you don't need anything else to give you the context it's 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 quite uh, quite instant in the in the way it passes on the message and that's the reason for trying this out and uh, i mean i guess it's not just about uh, letting go of the logo nita it's also about uh, doing not just in english but also doing it in eight regional languages we felt that this then again strengthens the connect with the consumer uh, i think the the moment you're able to communicate in your own language just adds and makes it a bit more heartfelt mm -hmm. right so i think that's the other reason why we felt so it's it's a fair amount of uh, um uh, supply chain complexity involved in making eight different bars and then ensuring that you know they are they are distributed in the right in the, in the right way to the right markets it's it's given sleepless nights to to a lot of teams that's worked on the back end to make it happen but we, we thought again this is the effort to take uh, to ensure that we can make um, uh, this initiative a bit more heartfelt no you know never before in a situation on our tv set so you know uh, switch on our mobile phones and about 80 to 90% ads are dealing with one topic covid 19 you know now this has been the case for weeks so as an advertiser what has been your overall strategy when you realize that this is not a fleeting problem that we are dealing with here yeah i think uh, uh, to be honest i think uh, the first thing that happened when the situation unfolded nita was really our uh, it was our attempt to first understand the supply side of things to understand what's happening on the supply mm -hmm. side and that's 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 the part of the business that was much more impacted yeah because of the store closures because of the lockdown because of the various challenges that we faced uh, in terms of the supply of our goods mm -hmm. because very soon we found that we were not able to service our markets and service our consumers yeah so i think uh, to be honest the first focus was uh, towards that and to understand how do we Uh, you know get that in place because finally at the end of the day what's the role of advertising the role of advertising is to ensure that the consumer gets the product and if the product is not available mm -hmm. you know then it's really you know uh, beyond a certain point you're saying what is it you know, what is it that you're doing so i think that was the first step we went through to ensure mm -hmm. that um, ensure that the supply side disruptions are mitigated and consumers get to find their products uh, uh, you know when when they go out to the market i think post that i guess the question really was that uh, you know uh, uh, what do we communicate and you know as, as product starts getting on to the shelves do we assume that it's business as usual do we assume that nothing has happened or do we think that there's something has happened and we need to have a point of view i think from whatever we have understood from our consumers i think uh, 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 i uh, you know uh, definitely uh, consumers are desiring uh to to talk to their to the brands that they love to the brands that they believe in the brands that they trust to understand uh, uh the brand's point of view and to also kind of reassure themselves in terms of how do i interpret this uh, the situation i think given the, what i was talking about the two broad impacts that the consumer felt on on the pandemic and on restricted living some brands and categories obviously had to tweak their message because they were offering something that is very specific to the situation brands that are operating in the, in the category of health and hygiene where they obviously have something specific to offer in the current circumstance and of course those brands and categories have chosen to specify and customize the messaging around that i understand i think other than that uh, uh, for us it's pretty much been to understand has anything changed in the consumers interaction with our category and is the consumer going to interact with the categories and brands differently and in that context do i need to tweak anything and i think hence in that context we started observing what's happening in the consumer's life from a demand side now and for example if they're not going mm -hmm. out at all, as often and they're not going to be hanging around and buying a chocolate if they're not going to be commuting to school or college and they're not going to buy a chocolate on the way to mm -hmm. tuition or buy a chocolate on the way back home and they're going to be at home then how do we leverage that and how do we ensure that we are salient and we, we give messaging to people who are at home so i think that's what we've tried to focus on mm -hmm. so one one focus is to say how is our interact how is the consumers interaction with the brands and categories changing and how do we then customize or change our messages to that context and then of course depending on our brands uh, and our, uh, and what purpose or what their core proposition is if you think that there could be a point of view we could share mm -hmm. with the consumers so that they can tide through this period uh, uh, and we could we could help them in this period i think that's what brands have tried to do so if dairy milk was talking about generosity and being generous and show a sense of gratitude to those who are out there 
Oreo is talking about staying playful at home because you know rather than getting bogged down, you have your family, you have your kids at home. Mm. This is your entertainment. Your living room is the new cinema hall. How do I how do I convert that? How do I be playful? How do I overcome whatever stresses and pressures that I might have at work? But take out the time to connect with my uh, with my family and my children. I think that's what Oreo is talking about. Bonita is talking about health and well-being. So I think trying to understand what we could talk about from our brand's core, which the consumers could connect with in their current context, is the second thing that we've tried to do. So those are the two things that we've tried to do in, in the current context. Now you're speaking about Oreo. I think just before the lockdown, we had an ad which said, you know, disconnect to connect, which was quite the initially what happened. So I'm sure you had to had to change your communication there on, you know, though you don't handle the Oreo vertical empire, but... Uh, Correct. I think uh, Oreo was inspiring people to disconnect. Now the inspiration is all around <laughs> us. We are supposed to disconnect. <laughs> what we need is the inspiration to connect, and that's what Oreo has provided. Yeah, <laughs> magically. It magically, I think, uh, it was just about uh, the, the Oreo's proposition was about uh, uh, staying playful, and you're saying now stay playful at home. So I think uh, almost a seamless mm-hmm. transition. You know, this is this is a situation where uh, you know a lot of sectors are doing well. Uh, some sectors obviously have taken the worst hit. Uh, FMCG is one of the better off uh, in a better off situation. But yet, as a brand, you cannot be seen to be hard selling your products. This is a sensitive situation right now. So where does as a where do as a brand where do you draw the line there as a you know, as a responsible brand? I think uh, uh, you draw the line by uh, clarifying for yourself what is the role you are playing. I think that at this at, at a very at, at a central level, the role that you're playing is to service what the consumer wants. We are in the service of our consumers, mm-hmm. and as long as you're clear about that and you're trying to solve for it, I think um, other things fall into place. I don't think you're here to we are here to, you know, uh, uh, put out something creative because we want to say it. Or, you know, we want to say something because we have a point of view. I think all of that evolves out of a core objective. To service what the consumer wants, so I think I mean that gives a sense of clarity uh, uh, in terms of what you need to do uh, and what you don't need to do. I think uh, definitely uh, uh, converting a crisis into an opportunity uh, uh, is a, is as you're rightly saying is is a, is a tightrope to manage. Uh, but I think uh, as long as you're clear about what, what you're doing uh, and you're, you're servicing what the consumer wants, there is no conflict. The consumer is seeking that. Mm-hmm. The moment you're out there uh, offering something that the consumer doesn't want is where you know things uh, fall apart. And so I think it starts with understanding your consumer deeply, knowing that in these times what he or she wants, and then servicing it. In which case there won't be any dissonance. I think it, I think if you have that filter, if you know your consumer, then I don't see uh, it becoming such a big issue. Of course, I mean given that no, there are just, uh, this moment to... the PNL to manage. Sorry, I was just saying that you know these are tough situations. There are business disruptions, as you're saying, so it's a PNL to manage, and of course, the, you know the, we need to make different choices in terms of managing the PNL, uh, and you have to align yourself to do to to that as well because you're also in service of delivering your PNL. Yeah, so those are the kind of uh, balances that we need to strike. I'll just take this moment to remind our viewers to keep tweeting. Uh, our hashtag is eForum Webinar and pitch brand talk. Uh, and also, please sending us your questions. Uh, I, I'd like to take one by Kalyani Bhartak. Uh, she wants to ask you uh, uh, where, where does your production and main, uh, you know manufacturing stand at this point in time? I know there was a hit in the first ha- in in the month of March, but has have things become better now? Things are improving by the day, and I think as we are all seeing the guidelines come through, we are complying with the government guidelines as they are coming through. And uh, uh, and uh, you know that is allowing us to get back to uh, our uh, normal operations. Yeah, they are clawing back, and while our factories are operational, we do have challenges in terms of complying with guidelines. We also have challenges in terms of having all our employees in place. Uh, in some cases, employees are stuck in other states, and we're still figuring out the best way for them to come back. Uh, there are some in some mm-hmm. of our manufacturing locations are close to containment zones, and we need to comply and we need to be careful about that. So yeah, it's a, it's also a very dynamic situation, right? So I think um, um, that's making things a bit more complicated than normal. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. but we are clawing back towards normalcy. You know, at this point in time, you know, when uh, what is your expectation from your creative agency? You know, a lot of them are making uh, video ads 
pro- many brands which are kind of interchangeable to be very honest uh, do you think this is the time when you can make video ads or should you about providing business solutions to your clients or maybe engage with your consumers in a very different format all ways what do you think it's interesting you almost seeming you seem to say that they both are in, not related you know driving business and doing something for the consumer i think i mean intensely they are related right i think uh, one of the uh, experiences uh, uh, that has helped us always over a period of time um uh, is uh, the quality of the relationship that we have with our agency partners i don't think uh, there are two sides to that table to say client one side and agency other side we see ourselves as brand custodians so in as much as uh, you know we are passionate about what creative goes out our agency partners are as passionate about delivering business so i think it's a it's a common understanding everything evolves out of delivering the brand's business objective and towards delivering a business objective there is a marketing objective and there is a communication objective that flows through so you should be able to see a clear linkage between what we are trying to do uh, and a facebook uh, post that you're putting out today or uh, a tweet that you're putting out tomorrow is kind of linked towards driving a certain objective which is in service of the business so i don't see any uh, dichotomy there and of course there are uh, some set of assets that are more focused on building equity and there are some assets that are you know designed towards uh, executing a certain promotion and both exist in service of the business so i think we are quite clear there and thankfully we don't have uh, uh, we have a fairly mature marketing ecosystem working towards uh, a common purpose so i don't see any issues there and i guess i mean that's that's a good place to be in that's what, that's what we should strive for so it's not about hey i got this idea let's put this out because it's covid times and consumer is thinking this and this let's put this out i don't think it's i mean i don't think they're responding in a reactive way i think proactively understanding what our consumer is going through and as i said I'll, I'll go back to the point that consumer is seeking uh, a point of view from from the brands and i think uh, mm-hmm. if you're able to interpret what the consumer is seeking and then uh, uh, give uh, the brand give a brand a message given our uh, given that the pnl allows it that's how it kind of flows mm-hmm. and tell us which are what are the different ways you are connecting with your uh, consumers i i went for i saw is using a lot of influencers if i'm not wrong uh, any other brand specific uh, you know mediums you are targeting well i mean uh, trying to figure out uh, and go where the consumer is really need us i think uh, 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 that's broadly been the approach to so figure out where the consumer is and engage with him or her depending on who the consumer cohort is uh, uh where he is and what he is seeking so if he is a gen zer whose uh, all data seems to tell us is possibly in a much more of a positive mind frame than many others in these times and really actually anticipating and looking forward to convert even the drudgery of sitting at home into something which is fun five star is actually engaging with him on instagram telling him to you know do nothing outside but do some have some fun inside so that's working in that context and then of course you have uh, uh, if you are a, if you are a you know young family with young children and you are trying to figure out interesting ways to uh, do some fun activities at home maybe you try something new in the kitchen you know uh, oreo and cadbury dairy milk is telling them you know go mad with madbury or you know create a nice oreo cheesecake at home and you know you know do it yourself kind of a thing starting customizing messages uh depending on um, uh who the consumer cohort is of course relying on influencers relying on uh, multiple channels we also have deep relationship with our platform partners we have uh, the jvps with them so i think we are also in talks with them in terms of what's right for each of these mediums and uh, and then you know kind of putting what is what is relevant for those mediums you know also tell me most brands right now have turned their attention to csr activities how mm-hmm. soon do you see product related campaigns making a return to center stage and tell me a little bit more when you say product related marketing what do you mean by that you know where you hard selling a product in the sense you know where a phone manufacturer goes on talking about these new features of a phone uh, a new product that you're launching in the market now it's more about you know stay safe take care that kind of uh, communication that is coming out of most brands so interesting question that you ask i think again um, 
yes, I, I don't think every brand message needs to definitely reflect the current times, but that's definitely uh, something to keep in mind uh, for us as we go forward. Uh, uh, that even mm -hmm. uh, I think all data seems to indicate, and markets where this uh, crisis has passed through is also giving us information that. Uh, post crisis as things open up things aren't going to go back to what they were earlier very soon i think there are there is going to be an overhang of the impact of the of the current situation people are going to behave a bit differently and reflecting that in our messaging needs to happen so even if we are thinking about new messages that we are trying, that a brand would want to put out it needs to kind of be conscious of what we've gone through in the last three months in, in the way you want to depict the messages or the kind of messages that you want to talk to. There might be some messages that would be more appropriate and some which not would not be as appropriate. And I we anticipate and we do when we are doing our homework, ensuring that we uh, work that through in our minds uh, uh, when you think about messages. So I'm and about even about core brand messaging, I would expect that there will be a context that will change uh, based on what consumers have experienced in the last two to three months. Um, and I think that's going to change. I think other than that, uh, I think, as I said, uh, uh, Anita, uh, some of the CSR messages are again emerging out of uh, the mother brand or the organization wanting to contribute uh, to the situation. I think what you've seen in, in, the, in the current uh, crisis is individuals and organizations have stood up and have realize that they need to play a part all of us have played our parts right many of us have ensured that our domestic help continues to get their salaries uh, you know we've gone many of us have gone out of the board to help those who, who come to a building and you know uh, the security guards the milkmen i think people are doing their bit going beyond their bit individuals and organizations are going their bit so i think that's what you're seeing and organizations are sharing that in the spirit of creating that movement unless you know uh, you're talking about this movement doing a groundswell coming up so that more and more people come in and contribute because the impact the economic impact amongst those uh, who've been really hurt is so huge mm -hmm. that we need more and more and actually continuous uh, flow in of people contributing to the, to the situation and that will happen only if we communicate to each other that hey this is what i'm doing not to say it, it's not it, it's not coming out of a zone of saying uh, trying to get brownie points for yourself but actually trying to share and create that spirit of sharing mm -hmm. uh, to say this is what we are doing and let's all do this together let's all get there together i think that's what is driving and in many cases many of these activities are also core to what an organization stands for or what a brand stands for it's what has been stood, is standing for for a long period of time if a brand stands for nutrition mm -hmm. and that's a, that's a hugely at stake in these conditions it makes sense for the brand to uh, talk about it. So I think it goes back to what's relevant in these times that brands are dialing up. But as things move on, there's a business to deliver. Uh, people are looking mm -hmm. for uh, stuff. People are going to go back to shop. They are going to look for a new shade of lipstick. They're going to, they're going to go back and figure out that they need a better phone. And uh, again, brands are in service of the consumers. If the consumers are looking out for that, brands are going to mm -hmm. communicate that. It's it's going to unfold. I think what's happening now is also in service of the consumer, and what when something new happens is also again in in, in service of the consumer. Let, let me take this uh, time to uh, take a question from one of our viewers from Facebook, who's watching this on Facebook Live. Uh, he's Partho Ray, and he wants to know: uh, given the supply chain challenges during COVID and competition, uh, COVID and uh, you know, at a time when competition and local brands are filling in the demand at the retail outlets, how difficult or easy is it going to be to reconnect with the consumers, and even the fear of brand loyalty shift? Yeah, I think uh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a very good point, and hence I think um, uh, relevant for some categories much more than some others, uh, categories that are, that are possibly wants and not needs, indulgences and not essentials. Um, uh, are likely to obviously need to work harder uh, uh, to, to re-establish uh, their credentials um, uh, broadly. Um, yes, and also those, those kinds of categories are as much influenced by supply as they are by demand. So if they're there in the store mm -hmm. and visible, they get picked up. So I think getting mm -hmm. that in place is a, is a fundamental part. I think a large part of our uh, 
the way we built our categories also by focusing in sales and focusing and doing a bunch of things in sales you've you know expanded our vesicular footprint and you know now more than 400000 stores if you go you'll find our coolers and you know that definitely ensures that you know we are connected to the consumer he can't miss cadbury if he comes into the store so i think uh, that's what we've done and of course that part is disrupted and the first focus is to get that back yeah that is that that will be our first priority and that will be the first and foremost way that we ensure that we re- reconnect so hence the big priority around sales a big priority around supply chain and those are the areas we have the maxing out on uh, in terms of uh, all our uh, all our focus uh, and hence uh, we are, all our, all the learning from the other markets are also telling us that those who hit the shelves the fastest to get back on the shelves the fastest are the ones who could win so and, and hence that's, that's definitely the first step i think uh, uh, going on from there i think um, uh, this is where uh, it goes back to uh, the kind of approach that brand builders have taken if in the recent past or in, in, in the long in, in the near term in the past they focused on short term and short term mm-hmm. sales on promotions on new launches etc etc and have not built on core equity they might struggle mm-hmm. harder and brands that have actually built a uh, built equity focused on equity have a strong proposition which is close to consumers hearts enjoy the trust of consumers i would suspect that you go back consumers will go back to the brands uh, uh, they trust i mean you and me are consumers right so when we go back to the stores which are the brands that we will pick up i mean there are brands we love that we've been loyal to we've been consuming over a, over a bunch of years yes if that's not available and i need that category maybe yes and today i am i am doing a switch okay i am going by what's available but mm-hmm. does that mean that i lose connect with my consume uh, with my with, with the brands that i'm close to i don't think so i think it's a short term disruption uh, in these times mm-hmm. will benefit it's also a much less cluttered environment but i mean right. uh, given the kind of business disruptions uh, it's safe to assume that only businesses that are doing well will continue to enjoy uh, mm-hmm. uh, being salient uh, on television at these times as things open up i think again who gets to the shelf fastest who has built equity right. in the past the and then who is going to invest i think it's always been a game of investment it's it's a tough country it's a big country millions of consumers millions of stores so it's a big factor of investment so those who are out there to invest uh, are likely to gain you know you spoke about business and i want to know you know i was reading mondelez international link said that uh, the pandemic is driving unprecedented demand for its snacks in north america and at the same time lockdowns in emerging markets including china have generated more than a third of mondelez's revenue having a toll on its business as far as it is concerned where does the business stand revenue where does the revenue stand uh, you're talking about india or you're talking about global india india so i think from an indian perspective i think uh, i mean uh, as you know monlis international uh, you know uh, over the last couple of years we've, we've gotten our vision right towards empowering people to snack right so we see ourselves as a snacking leader and hence we have a basket of categories mm-hmm. which thankfully kind of straddle all occasions uh, straddle multiple needs um, and you know uh, and hence we are able to offer a sweet and not just different categories also different price points right so we have a portfolio that goes from 1 rupees to 200 rupees so that allows us the flexibility to offer a range and of course as we are realizing mm-hmm. over the pandemic period there are obviously movements that's happening across uh, across uh, categories and some categories are benefiting and some categories are getting impacted those categories which are more impulse more out of home are impacted and those which are in home are seeing a boom so that's the balance that we are mm-hmm. seeing i think as you as you heard in the us we have a big big biscuits business and they of course enjoyed the benefit of pantry loading and that's what they've seen a lot of uh, a lot of growth so i think we're seeing mixed uh, uh, responses in meeta uh, and hence of course business has been impacted but yeah we're seeing different brands um, operate differently and i think as i was saying things are improving uh, and we do see that uh, uh, over a period of time uh, we will start moving towards a situation where we start uh uh recovery in as well you know uh, uh tell me what has been the biggest shift or change in marketing uh world post the slot of covid-19 i think uh, the situation because because it is unprecedented has ensured that uh, it, it has forced people to take a step back and reflect on uh almost a moment of pause to reflect on what you've been doing so far mm-hmm. and almost do a recontract to yourself to say okay 
Am I sure what I'm doing is right? Is there some things that need changing? And what, what needs changing? I think it, the fact that it's forced us to go back to think and go back to our kind of drawing board, I think is what is possibly the biggest change. Arising out of that, there are there are brands and categories which says, wow, this is a great opportunity. Let me go ahead and invest. And there are brands that say, okay, I need to do anything. So depending on where they are, the outcomes and the implications are different. Uh, mm -hmm. But otherwise, this, uh, this uh, uh, forced opportunity to rethink is what is, I think, the biggest change. Other than that, I think from a, from a, from a broad brand and marketing standpoint, it goes back to uh, uh, building brands and uh, uh, building strong propositions through compelling storytelling. I don't think that is going to change. And that's where I think what you were talking about earlier on, Nika, you can easily sift through wallpaper and figure out the kind of messages that cut through because they're emerging out of a strong proposition. No, having said that, tell me, uh, how has, uh, as far as advertising spends are concerned, how has it changed for uh, Mondelez? Are you spending as much on television? You were one of the biggest advertisers on television earlier. Are you spending as much on television right now? I think uh, obviously I cannot comment on numbers, uh, Nita, as you know. I think uh, uh, business has been impacted. So obviously our advertising has also, our investments have also been impacted. So I mean, that's the fact. Uh, having said that, I think uh, uh, wherever possible, I think we've seen that there are, there are opportunities uh, 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 to connect with consumers differently. And we've taken that opportunity. So even in April, we thought that there is an opportunity to talk to, we kicked off a program in January called Madbury, Cadbury Dairy Milk, which is really about inviting people, Madbury. So it was about inviting people okay. to uh, conceive of their own Cadbury Dairy Milk flavor. So pick up Cadbury Dairy Milk and mix and match whatever you want and conceive your new Dairy Milk flavor. And uh, we've had mm -hmm. more, uh, close to a million people who responded. Uh, and the, the whole notion of the Madbury campaign is, you know, just discover the magic of, mixing and matching what you love uh, with your favorite chocolate and discover a completely new uh, <laughs> new flavor that never existed. So we kicked off the campaign in January and actually the campaign, campaign was running through and through. We felt that there's an easy way to tweak that campaign to invite people to mm -hmm. use these COVID times to, you know, fool around with chocolate really. You know, take a cat milk, look around mm -hmm. in the kitchen. Okay, maybe some cinnamon. Or maybe some apples and let me see what comes through. I think that's, uh, that's uh, it's really uh, 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 a great opportunity. And that's what we did. And that's what we did in April. And mm -hmm. we've almost uh, taken that campaign, personalized it, uh, and depending on cohort, depending on interest areas. And we've created a host of, uh, a very interesting campaign in April that worked really well. As I spoke to you earlier, Oreo uh, tweeted message to say, stay people at home. And then of course, with five stars, you know, the, you know, the, everybody was saying don't go outside. So, you know, we just tweaked that to say do nothing outside. Five Star has been talking about do nothing for a while now. And we just said hashtag do nothing outside. So, you know, kind of leveraging that and talking to the millennials in an interesting way. So, wherever possible, we have done that. I think uh, so. I think um, uh, because we have uh, brands that uh, 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 that can relate to our consumers uh, and we could think of meaningful messaging, we've done that. Equally speaking, if there are brands where we think it's possibly not the right time to talk, uh, we've uh, not done anything on it. So I think depending on where we are, we've taken those choices. And the viewer from Zoom asks, how are you going to be approaching this uh, vocal for local call that is given by the Prime Minister? And, uh, and what's the question? Then how are you going to be approaching? I mean, is there, are there going to be more manufacturing facilities come, coming out from India, more products which are India's big? How does it work? I mean, we see ourselves. I'm guessing as, uh, this is a viewer's question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I, I'm just the, the reason I was a bit curious is I mean, we see ourselves as uh, uh, you know in service of uh, Indian consumers and launching products and doing stuff uh, in India, making in India, selling in India. Advertising in India, so I mean, I, for us, uh, I mean, I, I don't see any issue. Uh, consumers see us as a Indian MNC, uh, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, many many brands are uh, have uh, many many years of legacy. Uh, we have uh, uh, strong. I mean, these brands are truly Indian and represent uh, <laughs> the India that we have grown up in. So uh, yeah, so that's that's our point of view, and of course uh, we. We are a big source. We have big source of employment. Uh, we have multiple factories across the country. We are working engaged with our communities. We are working closely with uh, uh, with our farmers down south uh, who are growing cocoa. 
they are uh, you know not only invested in their communities but one of the largest sources of cocoa there uh, so we have a host of sustainability initiatives in the country so yeah uh, there's a bunch of things where we believe that you know we have nothing to fear and of course you know there have been clarifications that have come subsequently as well you know and uh, bear with me this is a slightly longish question just from me <laughs> Most brands have uh, cut their spends and you know, it's not um, reasonable to expect them to spend as much as they did in the previous year. Um, now, when Mondelez looks at uh, cutbacks uh, in advertising, you know, which of the three agencies would be affected the most? Would it be media agencies as you might not advertise as much? Creative agencies which might, you might not want to create as many fresh campaigns? Or would it be production house? It is ad production budget. It would be only a fraction of what? They were initially. There wouldn't be those blockbusters anymore. So, who would be the biggest casualty of the crisis amidst three? Yeah, I mean, uh, I would say that uh, you know, uh, Nita, it's all about the ecosystem, and I think uh, uh, you know we are committed to, and I mean, all are thankfully all our relationships are long term. So, we've had a fantastic uh, track record of. Uh, growth over the last few years and our, all our partners uh, have benefited from it and hence uh, when the situation gets tough uh, you know as i said i mean we have a very mature ecosystem and we are in it together so i think we are all in it together uh, we've been in it together in the past we are in it together today and tomorrow we'll smile together so i think that's the that's the spirit i don't think it's about singling out and saying okay you're impacted you're not all of us are impacted And then just one last question, uh, you know, now employees are at home, kids don't have school, all of us are constantly reaching out to some, uh, for something to munch on. So are you using this inside are you, to make your brand more relevant? Are there new launches expected which would cater to this munching habit? I think uh, uh, obviously no forward looking statements here, Nita, but I mean, we do have uh, uh, a very interesting lineup of products that are already available that of course we want people to munch on responsibly we want to offer consumers as much choice uh, and there's a whole host of things that we've done i think one of the reasons why the category has grown and actually bucked the trend in the past has also been because of the kind of um, innovation that we've done innovation not just in terms of completely new products but also on our course on our core brands uh, mm -hmm. So we have uh, uh, launched dark milk last year, which offers a completely new taste of chocolate to the consumers that didn't exist. Uh, mm -hmm. We've just recently introduced 70% dark chocolate in Boneville. Uh, we have some very interesting uh, variants in silk that we've launched, like silk hazelnut last year, silk Oreo red velvet. We've, uh, we've also interestingly launched a bunch of interesting um, uh, offers in the lower unit price point at 5 and 10. So in 5 rupees we've launched a new product called Chocobix which is a biscuit and uh, caramel coated chocolate which is a new product that we've launched in a few markets. Earlier this year we've launched Crispello uh, which is again a very interesting and a different unique texture uh, that mm -hmm. didn't exist before. Uh, we've launched Nutty 5 Star. So it's a host of launches. We've launched 30% reduced sugar. So as you can see I think in the last year and a half to 18 months we do have noticed that there is uh, increased excitement uh, in foods, increased excitement even in uh, chocolate and snacking. And uh, uh, we've catered to that. So I think uh, uh, there is a bunch of things uh, that we've done, uh, looking at different consumer cohorts, looking at different uh, 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 consumer groups in different cities. So I think there's a whole host available. And I think uh, we are currently focused on addressing the disruptions that they've gone through from a supply side and a demand side. So that's what is going to keep our hands full now uh, and uh, get things back on momentum. And of course, uh, using our brands to continue to uh, reassure consumers and offer them, offer them that kind of uh, support that we are there in it together and celebrating mm -hmm. the wonderful spirit that we've seen in the country. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think any adversity can take away the joy of dodging in that rich bar of chocolate. And uh, so hoping that uh, the crisis is behind all of us soon and uh, may Mondelez go very, very well. And uh, we look forward to many coming out of your factory. Uh, thank you so much, Anil, for joining us. It was great My having you here. My pleasure was mine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Stay safe.